Hey everybody, Psychosaurus is here and today we got another update into the game and this one is also bringing something quite big I have to say. So yeah, if you don't know it's the gear dismantler and we got some really big update about this. So yeah, let's get into the update. We have a few things to talk about. So gear dismantler. If you want, there is a trailer, YouTube video for from PF2K himself. You can check it out. Obviously, I will leave the link to this post in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So you can then click on this video and watch it for yourself. It's a nice trailer. I just have one issue. The When I played it, the music in the background was a little bit too loud. So PF2K, if you're watching this, just turn the volume down a little bit, please. I felt it was too loud for me. I don't know if anyone else had this problem, but it felt a little bit too loud for me. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, but yeah, gear dismantler, that's a big thing. So once I'm done with this blog, we'll get to this into more details. So yeah, change log. Gear dismantler now available in the city of Rome. Legendary crafting materials now available and accessible via the gear dismantler and more ways to obtain them coming later. So yeah, the gear dismantler, the big thing coming with this feature is that legendary crafting materials are becoming available. And about the crafting materials, the legendary ones, if you know, we have the basic workshops. I think I did the video about the crafting so you can check it out there but here in short you have the basic materials which would be like wooden planks stone and so on there's like five there then we have advanced materials there's also five of those with different rarities of materials so yeah the basic materials actually had four rarities the common uncommon rare and epic but the advanced ones had only the uncommon, rare, and epic. They were missing one rarity. There was no common, common mat material coming from those workshops. And so we got the legendary crafting materials. And these crafting materials later should be available for you to craft through the advanced workshops. So far, so what I know about it, it should be like you get one material every 24 hours. So it should be quite long time before you make them but because it's not available nothing is really confirmed some things might even change we'll see in the future but yeah so far the crafting materials are now available through the gear dismantler and the gear dismantler is about dismantling your items like i said i'll get to it more into detail later you just dismantle items you get materials that's the main point of this feature more into detail later. Okay, let's move on. Bug fixes fixed an issue where the Zabol Trader's brother quest giver was incorrectly called Zabol Trader and not Zabol Trader's brother. Okay, basically, you know, there's the bro Brother's Keeper quest in Zabol. I think this is the. because the Zabol Trader. Yeah, it's just because of that. That's what I'm gonna say. The quest, they're holding my brother, then <laughs> the Zabos trader is just Zabos trader, then who's the brother? Whatever, confusion is just naming thing, just to make more sense here. Fixed an issue where the advisor war, war leader Biorix was still increasing the Norse chief's damage. It no longer grants plus 100% damage to the chief. And I'm still angry about this change. God dang it. I still want my 100% damage back. Come on. <laughs> and no, I'm not gonna pick Teod. Teod is nice, but I'll explain why in the next video when I do the Norse advisor sets, because that needs some explanation why I don't really want to pick Teod. But yeah, th this change is still making me angry to this day. No more smashing power for my chiefs unfortunate fixed an issue where the advisor warlord where did not affect chaotic headhunters and guys attack 
So yeah, if you know, the Vesigatorix now increases the bonuses the, of the Celtic units. So if you have Spearman, it will grant it extra bonus against Calorie. If you have Slingers, it will grant bonus additional bonus against strange units but if you have like champion it will do nothing that's how it works and this obviously should affect advisor units as well the celtic ones so that should be the headhunters the guys at the it does not really affect longbowmen nor the war chariots if i remember correctly neither of those even have bonuses but because they are h4 you cannot pick them with versigatorix anyway so doesn't matter. So the thing is, Headhunters and Gasata should be affected as well. And that's the fix here. Okay, so Headhunters should get extra damage against infantry and if I remember against villagers as well. While Gasata has bonus against range. So there's that. Just so you know what to look at. Okay, fixed an issue where the advisor engineer Farzana and intentionally granted additional damage to siege towers is ranged attack, advisor description updated to match its correct and intended effects. Siege tower first attack, faster, farther, have plus one area damage when using their ranged attack. So this is something I was talking about in my Babylonian advisor sets that Farzana doesn't did not grant the bonus damage before, even though she was supposed to. But she proved to be really strong, and I definitely need to do this one <laughs> where I use the Siege Towers. That, that should be also something I should do in the future. But yeah, 50% attack rate is just a huge boost. With extra 50% damage as well, I would just say I was already like, man, this is too much. So I'm glad one part of it got removed. I'm seriously glad. That it never worked because no, that was just too strong. Felt wrong to me. Let's move on, okay? This just fixes the thing, or rather, the description that she never had the damage, and she never will. Okay, no, it's too, it's wrong to have so much damage from one advisor. Fixed a visual issue with the headhunter advisor unit where it didn't have any icon for or description in the gear panel, bottom center of the screen when the unit is selected. So I don't really know about this because I haven't used headhunters for so long. I don't remember this, but yeah, when you have advisor unit and you like select it, you know how you typically have normal unit and it has like the gear over here you can see it advisor units have like this icon that it's like hey it's ep epic cavalry advisor unit that, that that's pretty much it that's what was there so i don't know if that was bugged or anything so i don't know what the issue here was exactly but that's what i would guess but i don't know anything about it Fix the typo in the Advisor King Theod's English description. Okay, typo. Fixed an issue where javelins did not increase melee critical hit chance and swords did not increase range critical hit chance. This only affects Persian immortals and Roman centurions. Affected swords, affected javelins. Yeah, this is just the search website. Just sword critical hit. You find it. Okay, so if you don't know... Critical hit chance actually is not one stat. There are actually two stats, which is the melee critical hit chance and range critical hit chance. And this is what's exact exactly saying here. Javelins did not increase melee critical hit chance. That means javelins were improving only the ranged ones, but they did not have a stat for the melee critical hit chance. So if you had Centurion with Javelin that granted critical hit chance, it did not affect the melee attacks. That's what it was. So now it should be affecting them as well. And same for the swords, but for the range attacks. So immortals with something like Skatax, Immortal Reaper, or whatever it's called, that sword. That should now allow your immortals to create on their ranged attacks now. And no, Esfandiar has it said 
correctly in its in one of its upgrades descriptions it says melee critical hit chance okay so only the melee attacks don't expect anything from as fun they are like that okay that's what it actually does as fun they are only melee and it, there was actually some time i embark some time ago there was a bug where actually items that did grant both melee and ranged they actually granted different values for both of those okay so you had like good chance for melee was higher than the for the ranged ones <laughs> it's it's united now okay so it's like one stat for one value for both of those okay so that should be fixed but just interesting point to the past but yeah the similar issue was with axes if i remember that the throwing axeman could not critical hit i think that was i don't remember if it was fixed or not to be honest but yeah i i think that that change already happened though i don't remember correctly so don't call me on that but yeah things like these with critical hit chance happen <laughs> now it's it's fixed Moving on, fix an issue in the quest, defeat Amatus and all of its subsequent versions. Just the elite one, not sure if there will be any other version. Oh wait, also the quest line. Where, so the quest line, repeatable elite one. Where players who played the Roman civilization as the co-partner did not spawn with a fortress. That was interesting and the solution to this one was that pf2k moved the spawning point of the player a little bit so yeah as romans you have your fortress now enjoy okay i think there's one quest that if i remember one quest does have this issue as well but with other Sif and it, i think it was marion with norse Something similar. If PF2K wants to check it, hey, <laughs> Marion Norse, they don't spawn one long house. I think that was a thing some time ago. Don't know if it still exists. But yeah, moving on. Fix an issue with the Roman and Norse civilizations where they would incorrectly get bonus health and damage on their town centers under certain conditions in some quests. And this thing was actually something I spoke about. And some of you, if you are here for some time watching my channel, you might remember this from one of my streams. I was talking about this, that I was talking specifically about Norse. This was even before Romans got released, so it might have been like three, two, three years. At least two years, definitely. Romans are out for two years, so more than two years ago. I was talking about this on stream. And this was about Norse, that if you start quest in H2 or in H3, your town centers actually get extra health and damage. And honestly, I did not know <laughs> that, it was, that it was actually a bug. I didn't know about that. But later on, what I've actually noticed was that this same thing was happening to the Romans. And I was like, it might have been because Romans like, like got the, you know, the layout of your starting position. So you're like H3, you have the fortress, barracks, houses. And Romans actually got it copied from the Norse because they started with the same amount of houses as Norse. So that, that kind of bug actually got fixed. And but what I saw was that they still got the bonus damage. So I knew that Romans were getting it as well. But honestly, I didn't think about <laughs> this thing for so long. Ever since I saw it with the Romans, I didn't think about it. I completely forgot that it exists. And then suddenly, I think it was Tim, mentioned this on Discord, like, like noticing that Romans have extra health or something like that. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Turns out it was a bug. So that should have been fixed. But beware, currently and hopefully soon there will be hot fix. If you play as Roman starting in H3 quest, you, act you actually have it bugged a little bit there. Because currently, if you, start if you do those quests, 
you actually start with Persian buildings. I'm not joking. You start with Persian buildings, with Persian units. So you have Persian TC, Persian villagers, Persian scout. And advisors don't work for you. So for now, avoid those quests. Hopefully soon the hotfix will happen. Tomorrow, hopefully. It should happen as soon as possible because this is a huge bug, okay? But yeah, this just shows you how control plus C, control plus V can be dangerous in programming, game development and such, okay? <laughs> so, careful with that. But yeah, I warned you. Norse is fine, from what I remember. Romans should be fi fine otherwise. Just don't play quests like Giza, Dashur, I don't know... Total Iteranian, Asgard. Avoid those quests for now until hopefully tomorrow. Okay, quest updates. Replace the forest in the quest, legendary get back so that villagers don't get stuck while gathering wood. Honestly, villagers getting stuck. I, I don't know if the, getting stuck is the correct word. I would say they just don't know how to get to the nearest storehouse and they just sit there do nothing when they they can move they ju just don't do it i don't know why it, that's what it, this is so yeah kira is just fixing these trees for now if it works i don't know okay but it's a problem not only for this quest Okay, rewrote the movement script for the quest, deliver the supplies from the Roman campaigns, merchant transports, so that it doesn't get stopped moving to the next destination if it gets blocked by another unit on its way. And if I remember, this quest actually has this issue for a while where the transport just stops. This should have fixed it, but someone was already complaining that it's still happening. So, I don't know, I'm not... I didn't play this quest before, I don't, don't play it, I don't even remember where it is. Might, might be worth checking it, I think I might have played it once, and that's it. But yeah, careful in that quest. Okay, Legendary Breaking Bandits now grants one guaranteed legendary chest as part of its optional objective rewards. Now, if you know the quest, you remember that this quest has one... I would say one of the most annoying optional objectives in, in the game. And I would say this is the number one. And it's even worse than no H3 optional for from TBs or Biotic Returns. This one is, in my opinion, the number one. And that is a gather, obtain, or whatever the... The word is just have no stone. That's how I'm gonna say it in short. No stone whatsoever. You start with zero stone. You cannot gather stone. You cannot buy stone. You cannot even use consumables as Tim has found out. So no consumables. In short, no stone whatsoever. And if you don't realize what this thing actually means, that means you cannot build additional TCs, you cannot reach Golden Age, you cannot get defensive buildings, and also you cannot get any armory upgrades. And I dare to say the armory text is the most annoying thing of them all. Why? Imagine you play Beorix Returns. At least you get the first tier. Which means you somehow keep up with the enemy units and your units are not com that stupidly weak. But when you have no upgrades, who cares that you have access to more advanced units? They die no matter what. They do no damage. So that, that is definitely one of the most annoying ones. And worst of all, the enemy is just gonna reach the golden age, get all the upgrades even gets its own siege. There are also ballistas defending the main TCs. Yes, this quest was seriously 
the most annoying thing if you ask me you can actually check my old video which is over hour long which is pretty much me doing nothing just trying to snipe the enemy tc so they stop producing villagers so i can kill them and then just snipe the productions that's it <laughs> well i can do it faster now but i don't really want to revisit this quest and it might need some pieces of gear which i'm not Yeah, for someone who does not have the pieces of gear, yeah, this can be a little bit too long quest. So I'm definitely glad this was added. I definitely suggested this to PF2K because, yeah, it's definitely, like, if I had to say Biorix Returns, no HP, that is not that annoying. This one is really annoying. But sure, having access to H3 still brings some advantage. For example, your Trivemes can get extra range, which is nice. So you can utilize that, for example. But still, no armor attacks, 20% damage, 20% armor. Yeah, that's still a huge loss, if you ask me. But yeah, let's move on. Okay, no champion up, champion mode updates. Updated the champion mode website. Nope, nothing happened. UI updates. Fixed a few more inconsistencies between displayed bonuses for a quest rotation ui and the actual amount rewarded to players okay some of them might have been fixed but some of them still do exist and oh boy it's like never ending story oh boy always having like this bonus is you have this bonus and the ui is now saying no you're getting too much <laughs> you're getting even more than that it's just so annoying oh boy yeah you're getting like 100 percent extra coins and empire points and if you get to request something like valley of kings that can turn out to be huge bonus okay oh boy so yeah this definitely needs more to get looked at and oh boy, it's just yeah, PF2K wanted this feature, now he needs to <laughs> he needs to enjoy fixing that thing. Oh yes. Okay, other updates. Increase the maximum number of warehouses allowed per civilization to six from five. Okay, now we're getting to another big change. And if you remember, every civ is allowed to build only five warehouses. Well, in reality, you have five, but you can build only four, and for pro civs, it's only three. Why? Because every civ has this one rare warehouse, which is like unique. You cannot, you cannot actually turn it into blueprint. You cannot raise it, move it to inventory. Nothing. Okay, that warehouse is actually staying for with your civ forever cannot do anything about it why is that it's so it does not happen that you suddenly have no inventory space because at that point you will get screwed because then what are you gonna do you have no inventory if you don't have inventory well there is empire vault but you cannot use items from the empire vault you need to move them to your inventory to actually use them so that's why it exists. You cannot do that. And in case of pro saves, you also get one epic warehouse, the 20 slot. So all saves have this one perma 16 slot warehouse. Pro saves also have one perma 20 slot warehouse. So yeah, if you're playing as Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, Celts, you can build up to four 24 slot warehouses whereas for babylonians persians norse and soon to be indians you can build only three 24 slot warehouses with this change you're getting one more one more up to 24 slots per sieve which if you know how to multiply you should know that if you don't well here's the the truth about this 
since every sieve is getting 124 slot, 7 times for 7 sieves, that's 168 slots in your inventory. For free, suddenly, okay? You just need to get the warehouse. That's a lot of space, if you ask me. And with all the changes that have been happening recently, especially with the materials, stacking the blueprints of like residences and such, I feel like we've been getting too many, invent too many inventory slots that I feel like getting even more is like, man, I, I feel like I have too, too many inventory slots. And that's why I feel like I kind of dislike this change because it just means, okay, I don't have to manage my inventory that much now because I get it, get more slots for free. I mean, in this game, I feel like inventory space should be like another kind of resource that you need to manage well. And if you just have too many items, it's time to sell those items or dismantle them or trade them with other players. Why to keep them? Okay. And that's what I mean. It's just, you have so many items. You ju just need to get rid of them with this. I mean, okay, it happened. I am a little bit against it, but okay, I can live with it. I, I personally, I don't really care if, if I have to ease my time and don't have to worry too much about my inventory space. Okay. That's nice. But yeah, still, I feel like inventory space should be just, you should be able to manage it a little bit. Let's move on. Mycanian heavy gloves has been removed from Persian, Babylonian and Norse stores and replaced with the following items. Persians, Zagrosian heavy gloves, Babylonians, Akkadian heavy gloves, Norse, Nordic heavy gloves. Not implemented, Indians, Morian heavy gloves. This will not affect existing items, the stats are identical and this is merely a visual flavor change. Cost increased to 250 coins from 175. Added missing translations for the Spanish, Chinese, German, French, Italian languages. Okay, back to the go gloves, okay? So yeah, pr pretty much, it sounds weird when you can buy Mycanian, which is Greek, gloves in the Persian city or in the Babylonian city or in the Norse city. It just doesn't make sense, okay? So this is just, yeah, okay, like you don't have to worry about it too much, it's just a little bit more expensive. But yeah, if we take a look here at the Tarsus General Store, you can see Zagrosian heavy gloves. The stats, I actually had to check it out for myself, they are the same, no need to worry about it. Level 20 gauntlets, 250 coins, that's pretty much it. That's the whole change. Okay, I'm gonna move to the Rome. But yeah, that's the whole change. It's just different name. So it just makes sense a little bit more. Okay, and X life changes. And this one is actually something interesting. Optimize the loading system of unit and building models and textures to drastically reduce the amount of in-game lag caused when a new unit is created for the first time in a match quest. Okay. This one is actually pretty big because if you have ever noticed, sometimes the game just freezes for a moment, for a second, and then it just keeps running. And you might have noticed this a few times. The times where I noticed this was mainly when creating arrow ships, triremes, swan ships, doesn't matter. But when creating those ships for the first time, you could have seen that, that was happening. You could see freeze in the lower Nile legendary quest. I definitely saw that where you play for a few seconds, suddenly the game freezes and then you keep going. That could have happened. You could have actually saw that when you're placing the Roman forum, this was actually happening to me every time. First time you see the forum, it freezes, then the forum is there. So 
those are just few examples where it could have happened i saw a few more but yeah these are like the ones i saw the most often this removed this one second freeze that i just said so when i selected the roman forum after this maintenance actually the forum showed itself immediately which felt nice to be honest i just select the forum no freeze nice i can place it right away so that that's the change this should be doing this should be affecting but i also have one big issue and i don't know if it's like directly connected to this but i i during the weekends i actually am away from my main pc and i have to use this very old notebook which is not really a gaming computer but i could still play age of empires online on it but after this change i have noticed that the game god damn it, it it's it's freezing <laughs> it's like i'm not not really like free but yeah i'm having like I tried playing a quest and it was like move for a little bit freeze move for a little bit freeze i don't know if it's connected to this issue it might be it might have been something with steam i, I don't know i just was looking at something but i feel like after this change this started happening might be an issue might have to stop playing on my old computer okay that's fine i I just need to log in to grab the daily rewards, fine. But yeah, it was annoying. And to be honest, I I got my Romans into Zabol. And when I tried to get back into the game, loading the Zabol, every time I just got back into the main menu. I couldn't get into the game as Romans suddenly on that old PC. So if you have the same issue, well... <laughs> I, I just have my suspicion that this might be it because nothing else makes sense, okay? Why it would be happening. But yeah, let's end it here. I like it when I am on my main PC. I hate it on my slow PC, okay? But yeah, there has been some nice changes. Definitely what you're going to be interested in most will be the dismantler. But if I had to say this is nice change overall, this one... It's just a flavor. I'm not really a fan of the warehouses, but okay, it's there. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, the bonuses still need fixing. And is there anything? Breaking Bandits definitely needed something like that because you play that quest once and then never. So this one at least gives you one reason to play that quest again and do it 100%. And other than that, yeah, fixes. I mean, it's just fixes. That's most likely it. So, yeah, we're going to move on to the dismantler. And before I move into the game, there is this one nice dismantler output guide. And you can actually find this on Discord in the, I think it's download media channel. You just go there, it's, it's there, PF2K put it there, so you can find it there. I'm just gonna put it here. I think PF2K said that this should become part of the dismantler UI at some point. Because he just didn't make it in time, because... Oh boy, it's a pretty big one. I'm just gonna keep it short, okay? So, dismantle output guide. Here you can find which materials you can get from dismantling each type of gear in the dismantler. Note that the number of materials you get depends on the quality of your item. The higher your item stats, the more materials you will get. So, to put it, it simply, every item has like this stat roll. So, yeah, the higher the stats, the better quality of the item it, this is and the better stats it has the more materials you'll get from the item that's what this one says and yes so that's pretty much it so yeah depending on the item you put into the dismantler you get materials 
Now, first of all, we have the rarity. And according to the rarity, you get the materials. And you can see we have the uncommon one. Here you will get one common material. You can see it's just always one common. And then two are uncommon. One basic, one advanced. Then we have the rare. We have two rare materials. Again, basic, advanced. And then we have the one tier lower the uncommon one in this case basic material and then the same for the epic we have advanced and basic epic material and then one tier lower rare basic material that's what you have here and this one this is pretty much you can see it works the same way for these three now legendary ones are gonna be the exception because the legendary tier that did not exist up to this point so now we have legendary crafting materials and there will be five in total there are five in total because obviously five workshops in this case advanced each having one legendary material so legendary ones will be giving you one one type of the advanced legendary material and then you get one advanced epic material and one basic epic material you can see okay so that's the difference for the legendary ones instead of giving like one lower tier material they'll give they'll give you two lower tier materials because there is no basic legendary material only the advanced now and now you need to look at the item type you're using okay so if you have armor plating this is what you will be getting okay so in case of the epic one epic armor plating you'll be getting the silk cloth the ebony planks and the obsidian stones but if we use for example heavy spear you will get diamonds concrete blocks and guaracan planks so that's pretty much how this works you get this item type look at the rarity find the item type and that's what you will get okay the number obviously depends how good the material is and that's pretty much it that's how the materials here work so if you want to check it i'm just gonna scroll it down for you slowly but like i said it's on discord download media you'll find it there you can check it out for yourself all these materials this is very nice and before i end this obviously we need to check this in the game so yeah the dismantler is available in the city of rome so you need to get to rome i don't remember the exact levels romans i think they get it sooner but every other sif I don't remember if you need to be level 40 or you get it at level 20 so that depends but yeah the dismantler is available right here you can find this like this kind of workshop you can even see nice icon this is quite nice where is this if you play the invasion of rome it's pretty much close uh, yeah it's pretty much where your player one starting base is so that's where I would describe where you to find it in the city. But yeah, if you just start looking at this, whatever this is, the Circus Ma Maximus, and you go to the left, and a little bit high, higher, yeah, just go to, through the left gate, go a little bit higher, there you will find the Roman for Forge, the Dismantler. Now let's go into this. As you can see, this is just simple. You don't have the guide here, so hopefully in the future it will be here available so you can check it out and don't have to go and look it up somewhere else. Gear Dismantler. Dismantling explained. Drag and drop any equipment of your choice to convert it to different materials. The type and amount of materials varies based on your item's type, level and rarity. Okay. Type and amount. I don't know if there is like... How the level affects it, this exactly? I would have to like get some lower tier items for myself. But yeah, 
we, we saw it. The type, the rarity, definitely changes the materials. Remember, craftable store, store bot event and questline completion rewards, reward legendary equipment cannot be dismantled. Okay, this one needs to be corrected a little bit. Craftable actually can be dismantled. The other items, store bot event questline, I tried those. They, I didn't see any. With one exception, actually, but that's because the item is no longer available at the store, but you cannot even get the item, which was the old version of the Delian Hood that I still have. And that one actually could have been. Actually, can I show it to you? I still have the Delian wheels, and you should be able to put it there. There you have it. You can actually dismantle if you have the old versions. Which I do not recommend because these are one of a kind. Cannot get them anymore, so rare pieces, okay? <laughs> Cannot get them anymore. Keep those. But yeah, if I try to destroy, let's see, I have these Ashur's arrows. Cannot dismantle. If I try to Athena spear, cannot dismantle. It's that simple. Is there anything store purchased? I don't remember. Store purchased. I don't think these are like store purchase. So if I go quickly here, I don't want to spend too much here. But I guess no other choice. What's like really cheap? 275, 35, 27, 22. Oh, okay, that's fine. I take the Trajan's helm, try to put it there. Cannot dismantle. Okay. Great, can put it back. So there's that. Okay. Now, let's go dismantling. And as you can see, I have some items here. I did one come together just so you have some, some idea of like what how many materials you might be able to get from these and yeah I gotta come together this is obviously a recipe if I try to obviously cannot dismantle it I even can try Sargon cannot dismantle it we need equipment so yeah I'm gonna sell this so it does not stand in the way okay so we take the item and let's start the legendary one here so the sturdy ram hat you can see it has really bad damage but really good infantry armor if we put it there you can see what materials you will get and then also the amount so I get 13 philosopher stones 12 white honey and two Vitruvius' tools which is one of the new materials and this one should be craft crafted at the tool maker workshop you know how you have the arc is it Archimedes tools yes so it's like the next tier Okay, and now I have this item here. We dismantle it. Then, if I click the retrieve, nice, puts them all in my inventory. Now, first thing I kind of dislike about this is the fact that I am getting more philosopher stones than white honey. Why? Because this is advanced material. Advanced materials are crafted at the advanced workshops and you are limited to only two advanced workshops per save and this is why i disliked it it's because it already gives me so many advanced materials more than the basic ones which actually i can have four times as many of those ones so this definitely becomes a great source of these advanced material of these epic materials okay so that's the first thing. Other than that, I think so far it's good. I would argue about the numbers yet, because if I'm not mistaken, if you have like really good item, you can get like up to 20 of these advanced materials. That's a lot per item, like that's a lot. If, I think this is a good example. 17, I mean, it's up to you, okay? Whatever you dismantle. Now, there are obviously some items you don't really want to use. If I had to say an example, it's like Scrolls of Gilgamesh. Everyone knows those items, right? You have the 
cheaper units but with increased train time which is not something you would want to put on your units so it's definitely a worth candidate of dismantling if you want the materials if and honestly you don't really want to sell those items at the vendor because if you check the prices of what you get at the vendor it's like 310 i mean you can see it here 310 coins if i take a look at the red item that's 270 so legendary from the rare item is like 40 coins i think if i had level 40 uncommon piece of gear that one is like 260 250 that's not a huge difference between like uncommon and legendary tier so if you ask me it's if i wanted to sell items i would just go and farm the uncommon items because first of all it's easier to play repeatable quests than legendary ones and you can have so many of those in no time so for coins i would not go with selling legendary items obviously i could trade them but if i keep getting like scrolls of gilgamesh which which player is actually buying those <laughs> maybe you'll find someone but you don't want them so that is a worthy candidate to dismantle now let's move on we'll, we'll go with the we got the legendary item right here let's go with the epic items and we're gonna use these heraclitus which i don't know if these are like good values but you can tell like for one item one epic i already get 10 silk cloths dismantle it beautiful retrieve it and like 10 silk cloths for one epic item that is a lot i mean sorry but you can get like two epic items by playing elite quests guaranteed you you have guaranteed epic chests there epic items guaranteed you can dismantle that is a lot of materials if you ask me so this is one thing I truly dislike about the dismantler is how many materials is it giving to me? Okay, but well, let's move on. Okay, I have the Athena's Blessed Tuning. This one is like really bad. Dude, that, that sword gave me like 10, but this is like, if I'm not mistaken, Athena's is like 86% at max. And this one is giving me like 13 Archimedes tools. Like, even more than what the sword offered me. Which is even more insane, in my opinion. Okay, retrieve. There we have it. I'm gonna put it together, just so you know how many materials. And even the rare ones, look at this. 65. Remember, one of these takes two hours to craft. I just dismantled two items. This would be 130 hours to get of the work time for, from the workshops. That's how insane this is. Now let's go with the last one, diamond staff. I mean, I understand that it's supposed to give me diamonds, but really? 16? 41 iron ingots? That's just a lot if you ask me. Okay, I should get rid of of the advisor here okay because advisors cannot be this one too as well but yeah this is the legendary ones okay we got two of those materials i think this one goes up to three 28 coins for two 14 coins for one that's pretty good price that's pretty good price i mean 28 for 12 of these Six times more coins. Damn, that's just so good. And obviously this is even better, <laughs> but yeah. Just look at the number of materials we got. Now, iron ingots, fine leather, you can actually purchase those at the Cypress mm -hmm. store. Or even the Bahams bundles, bulk or whatever that store is. You can buy full stack there. Costs a little bit of coins, but it's like in instantly you have full stack. So, like, these two materials don't really matter that much, but, like, the epic material, which you can only craft, or could have crafted up to this point, suddenly, look how much I got, and that's just three epic items. This is what I find just so, 
stupidly broken about this thing, th about this feature. I feel like the number of materials should go down. Like, okay, if you're a new player, it might be hard for you to get like few ep epic items. I can get that, but you still can get some. Like from repeatables, you see one, well, one or two items once in a while, like once in five quests. Just a guess. I don't know exactly the chance here, but it's not that hard to get them. And remember what you can do with these materials. You can build stores, the epic stores, which already give you access to some pretty good items, with which you can use to beat some easier legendary quests. No problem, actually. What else you can use? Crafting, obviously, if you have recipes or you know someone with the recipe, you can craft some good epic items. And if you gather enough materials, which shouldn't be that hard with this, like I play a few, I play just one quest and look, I already got this many materials. But crafting legendary items shouldn't be that bad. Okay, let's destroy the red items, okay. Nice, let's go. Okay, I'm a little bit limited on the space here. I'm gonna put this together. Okay, we got this and dismantle. Three. Okay. Now I'm a little bit worried about the space. Should I do something about this? Mm, I wish I had more space right now. I don't have a storehouse to build, that's unfortunate. Okay, you know what, we already got through the diamonds. Okay, let's move them here. Okay, we can break another one. You give tools, planks, spices, not good. Let's do... Tools, planks, that's nice. Okay, let's do this. Right, we're playing smart here. Tools, okay. Uh, glue, yes, we can do this. Okay, dismantling. Okay, we have few of these. Okay, and last one, let's break this, there you have it, okay, and look at this, okay, all of these materials by playing one legendary quest, that's literally what I got, okay, I'm gonna put this all together now, yeah, I got a few diamonds as well, that's just a lot of materials, okay, and that's what I'm going to criticize about this feature. It's just the amount of materials you can get from this. But yeah, that, that's all about the dismantler. But yeah, I, I'm going to say it's a nice feature. I just feel like the numbers need to go down. Because this is just insane amount of materials, if you ask me. This just makes... I mean, if I ignore the rare item rare materials because you need like only a few pieces if you want the rare store if you want to build some decorations you will you definitely want to make like one full stack of those materials if you're decorating your city you're gonna need those definitely so yeah dismantling rare items can be good and you can see it's a lot of materials from rare items and rare items are super easy to get you don't have to play legendary quests for those you can play just elite quests it's that simple. But yeah, epic materials, I think that's the biggest issue. Like, for rare materials, I definitely still would say yes, go down, but... I'm rather worried about the advanced than the basic materials. I, w I don't really care about the basic materials. I mean, those are easier to get because you can have four times as many workshops, but for the advanced materials, yes, that's a lot. That's just... A lot. Like, look at this. 61 here, 45 here, 18 here, okay. 
I don't think anything else is the advanced material here. So that, that's that, yeah. And then like the epic, damn, that's just a lot. So yeah, my biggest issue, the number of materials. That That is just insane in my opinion. How much you can get. Because every player, I mean, you just find the blueprint for your epic store. You have it built like in few quests like you just got a few epic materials no problem it, it is, is it something really you can dismantle go ahead free materials you get the store you can get the items from that store now that can work for you okay you still need coins but still you play a few quests you got the coins <laughs> Okay, you can afford few of those items. You can start doing some legendary quests. Guess what? You can dismantle more items. Start crafting those better items. Yes. Yeah, I'm just gonna criticize the number of materials we're getting from this. And it is, I think, rightfully. Okay. And yeah, that's all I have to say about the dismantler. But before I go, there is one more thing. I need to mention this. I don't know how I did that. That was nice. Did it do it? Okay. Yes, I am. I should be switched. Am I? Good. Okay, so there is one more thing, and this is something PF2K started. And he wants to see how this works out. But, but okay. I'm just going to say it in short. We know about advisor units. There are these nice units that you might want to use sometimes. Most likely when you're leveling up, it's nice to get this one epic advisor unit because then you can use it to quickly level up because it is really powerful for you. But once you reach level 40 and you want to do the legendary quest, suddenly those units, they are not that good looking, okay? They are not the first thing to look at. Some of them are like still okay to use. But most likely you will go with something from your save once you have the good gear on your unit. Plus you don't have to sacrifice the advisor, advisors to get access to those units and instead you can use something to boost your units and then also you don't have to build a fortress. Which again is playing against advisor units. So at level 40 they just become really bad. And yeah, no, nobody is re really gonna use them. If, you want to use them then it's something you want to do just so you have fun and so there was like a lot of discussion about like changing the advisor units someone had like give them items which is not realistically possible because then you would have to make them like look different with every piece of gear and that's not really possible because you just have four models which would mean making more models for those units that's a lot of work so yeah just a lot of discussion so pf2k came up with few ideas how to rework these units and this is actually written here i'm not gonna read through this if you want to check it out i'll leave the link in the description but yeah this is about reworking advisor units and pf2k offered like that he would do it but it would be his personal project not really like something part of the project Celeste necessarily. It would become in the end, but it's not something like the whole team would work on. It's just something he would work on, but it would be a lot of work. And in fact, he's saying it here that it would be like 50 plus hours of work. I hope this is hours. I don't, I don't know. Like if it's weeks, then it's going to take forever, but this should be hours. I mean, he's saying several weeks, so this should be like 50 plus hours of work. And obviously, the man needs to live somehow. He cannot just work on this and then be like, yes, I did it. But he needs to survive. He needs the money to live, just like anyone else, okay? And he's busy, obviously. Studies, okay, soon there will be holiday. He'll be going home on a break. And then he will be going for some internships. That's what he said. And obviously, once he starts the internships, it's going to be harder to work on something else. Okay. 
he might be still able to invest some time into Project Celeste, but obviously these kinds of projects would suddenly become harder to work on, okay? So here's your opportunity. If you want to support the idea of reworking advisor units and you would love to see this, then all you need to do is come over here on coffee.com to the PF2 case and decide to donate or tip, whichever word you prefer, some amount of money. Obviously here it says 450 euros is the goal, so it's up to you. If you wanna really see the advisor units rework, obviously you don't have to, I'm just saying this, BF2K doesn't really want to make a huge thing or like too public. But if you wanna see something like this happening, who knows how long it's actually gonna take, okay? But yeah, if you wanna support this kind of idea, then definitely I'll put the link in the description again. If you want to donate for this idea, you can, okay? And I definitely want to see some more usage for the advisor units because I like them. There are few that I, few units that I seriously love, like Hetairoi, because that is like one of the coolest unit units in the game. And the only one that's using Torch to fight and actually burn the buildings. So I definitely want to see this actually happening so if you are like me you want to see this actually going up please donate to pf2k i mean the, the man is doing a lot for the project celeste come on and he's been doing it for so long he never asked for money come on so yeah you you don't have to agree with this but just consider okay and that's all from me for now. So I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to like this, subscribe to the channel, share this so people know, hey, new feature is here. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.